Alright, in this tutorial video we're going to go over the necessary requirements for the course tilt series alignment using iMod this eTomo interface. If you're familiar with tilt series alignment, which presumably you are coming into subtomogram averaging and classification, then there's a handful of things that you should still pay attention to that are specific to the alignment model that EM Clarity assumes is being fit. If you are new to Tilt Series Alignment using iMod and eTomo, there is a handful of great resources on the iMod website, and I would highly recommend you review those before proceeding further going through their tutorial. Today I'm only going to go through the bare set of alignment parameters fit and subsequent results that we need to gather in order to move forward into the EM Clarity workflow. So this is also assuming that you've gone through the obtaining the tutorial data tutorial as well, and that we've created the appropriate working directory, which here we're calling EM Clarity Tutorial. Uh, for those new to the command line in Linux, just also note that we don't like to leave spaces in our names. It's really a headache for a lot of things. So we often use an underscore when we want to have a space. Um, that aside, we've also created this raw data directory where I've put one of the tilt series that we've uh, downloaded. Notice the S that's for the MRC format in a stack which just means a stack of 2D projections. iMod's convention on the other hand is to label as .st. Either way is fine, they read information from the header which is a space at the beginning of the file that stores information about the data contained in there. So the extension actually doesn't matter. So if you're coming from Windows that may seem a bit of a surprise. Uh, but the file extension actually doesn't matter to a lot of programs. So we've also got this name that we don't really love. You should have both 5 and 8. And what we'll do is we're going to create a working directory now just for the imod alignment using the make directory command. We can call it imod ally. Now the reason to do this is that imod writes many files out to disk. It's a uh, standover from having to do with the very large memory requirements compared to especially historically what was available in terms of RAM. Um, so this makes cleaning things up later much easier. So we're going to change directory using cd to imodaline. And now we're going to create soft links, which is just a pointer to the data, giving it a name that's a little easier to digest. So the link command is ln, and the flag is soft, which you can use the man pages to find out what that means if you're curious. And we're just going to link that back to our file, and we're going to give it a name tilt1.st. So this is a convention that's used in EM Clarity, uh, is just to use some base name tilt, you could call it Tomo, you could call it Spaghetti, or whatever you care, I don't know, it doesn't matter. Uh, just a simple word that starts with a character and ends with a digit. The digits don't necessarily need to be sequential, but I don't know why you would make your life more complicated. So this we'll call tilt1. When you move on to number 8, you would call it tilt2, or tilt79 if that's what floats your boat. So we've created this link, which now shows up in our file. If we do the long listing, it tells us where this is pointing, which is back up a level. And now we're ready to move forward, so we'll run eTomo, which assumes you've gone through the install and you've checked your iMod installation is proper. We're going to select Build Tomogram, and now we just need to choose our data set, which is tilt1.stack. We're going to select Single Axis, if that isn't your default, then Scan Header. Now there's a couple things to point out here. The header, which contains information about this tilt series, is wrong. The pixel size should actually be 2.17 angstroms, or 0.217 nanometers. The fiducial model never shows up, so there's 10 nanometer gold beads, which we use for this data collection. Now this image rotation is a rotation of the image as recorded, compared to the actual tilt axis in the final image. So this was correct for the raw data, but these data have already been resampled, so you actually want to use the value of negative 4. And these are things that will end up changing later on in the header so that it reads correctly. Uh, but the take-home message here is that the header, as useful as it is, is often not correct. Uh, if you've collected your data with serial M or even FEI, often this pixel size is off. So you really want to make sure that your true calibrated pixel size is correct here. This image rotation is also very important. And if you're collecting at medium mags, having used a K2, or uh, some higher mags in a Polara, if this number is close to 90, you also have to be careful for inversions of handedness. So in this case, we're going to extract the tilt angles from the data, which in this case, they are correct in the header file. So we'll create the comm scripts. 
and this shows us sort of a roadmap through Itomo's um, alignment process. So to give you an idea what we'll do, the pre-processing we're going to skip. Uh, typically, if you're not sure if you should run it, you should run it. If you're running with CCD data, you definitely want to run it. Uh, but if you're confident that your gain correction is right with a direct electron detector, it's probably not necessary to do. We are going to do the course tilt series alignment, which in this case is a sequential cross-correlation based alignment, which is not very accurate. Um, but we'll use that as an input to a fiducial model alignment. Once we create that, we're going to skip all the way to the end and we're going to generate a model for where the gold beads are so that we can give that TM clarity later to erase those gold beads. Starting with the course tilt series alignment, we're going to open the advanced tab and we're going to reduce the high frequency cutoff to 0.15 and cal calculate cross correlation. While it's running, this new stack command creates the course align stack. We're going to uncheck the convert to bytes and we're also going to bin by value of 4. Uh, I prefer to use in this case, anytime you're using cross-correlation based methods on the tilt series, 8 to 10 angstroms per pixel as our object pixel size. So 2 angstrom per pixel times 4 gives us roughly 8. And we're going to generate the course line stack, which should only take a minute. Uh, binning also obviously speeds up processing. And now that we've created it, we're going to view the stack. And this is important to do to make sure there's no gross errors. Uh, you can see that there's a intensity gradient along this image. Uh, that will be corrected with a high pass filter later in EM Clarity. But by clicking on it, you can now see the tilt series alignment is pretty good, which you would expect. This is supposed to be a well aligned tilt series, as given um, from the site. But you can see if you focus, say, on this bead, there's a pretty obvious wiggle uh, in the tilt series. And that's why the subtomogram sub based fiducial alignment, or tomogram particle polishing, in EM clarity is so crucial for improving the resolution because we actually come in and find all these ribosomes that we see and use them instead of the gold beads. But for now, the gold beads are what we have. So we're going to close the 3D mod window, select done, and move on to seeding the fiducial model. We check make seed model manually, and all we're doing here is picking these positions that we want to use. So we don't have a ton of gold beads here, so we're going to end up choosing them all. The gold beads, particularly towards the edge, could be problematic in higher tilts. And typically you want to select beads if you can ignore some just to be around your specimen. So we have ribosomes everywhere in the field of view, so we want to choose gold beads everywhere if we can. We close the 3D model, saving this model here, and then we go to track beads which we'll do with a Sobel filter with the standard deviation of the kernel set to one and a half because we're using cryo data. And we'll track the seed model. Once that's done, we have to fix any gaps that automatic tracking may have left. So if you select the image and hit spacebar, it will tell you in the here, contour one is missing a point down. It'll pop up as a little yellow arrow, which you can use your page down and page up keys to move through. So if we page down, we see that that bead hasn't been selected, so we can just left click on it, and we see the yellow arrow pops up, so we can just continue working through. And we hit the space bar again, it will take us to the next contour, which is down here. We see that it's missing a point, and we can work our way through. You don't necessarily have to go through and select all of these. If you fill in a handful that are missing, you can oftentimes track with the fiducia model as a seed rather than the original seed model. Okay, once you pop up that you have no more gaps found as displayed in the output from the 3D mod, we'll again close the window and save the model. And we'll track with that new fiducia model as seed. Now that we're done with that, we're going to go into fitting the gold bead alignment. So the iMod program that actually does this behind the scenes is called Tilt Align. So if you hit man for the man pages and tilt align, this gives you a full description of how this program works. Particularly useful to review is the actual alignment model, what it is we're fitting. There's a couple of publications uh, described both in this book, which if you haven't read this book and you're interested in tomography and subtomogram analysis, you should probably read the thing cover to cover. Uh, and the original publication describing 
these methods here should also be reviewed. As far as parameters we fit and pay attention in 2D and Clarity, we can fit this entire alignment model if we wanted, uh, but typically all we fit are the magnification variable, a tilt around the tilt axis, a rotation in the plane, and also shifts in the plane. Uh, compression is not really relevant for cryo data, and the stretching could be fit, although in the preliminary tests I conducted, it tended to lead more to overfitting than to any improvement in the solution. If you feel your data could really benefit from stretching, please let me know and we can talk about implementing that as an option. So going back over here to the eTomo window, there's a few things we want to change. There are not really enough beads to get a real reliable local alignment, but we can at least get some amount of local going on. And what that does is it uh, treats local image patches as being able to move somewhat independently. And that's a real important feature in EM Clarity when we get to using tomogram particle polishing. We also want to go to these global variables and note that we've selected to solve for all the rotations, all the magnifications, and we want to group the tilt angles by five. And this is because the tilt angles are a little harder to solve for, particularly at low tilt. So we don't want to try and solve for each one explicitly, which can lead to overfitting and uh, wonky answers. Uh, if you're using the default setup, these two should be selected, but if you have your own eTomo parameter set, you might have changed these at some point. So just make sure you're solving for all of them. We'll go back to general and compute the alignment. And this should be very fast because we only have about eight fiducial markers. We'll view or edit the fiducial model. So this opens up again the bead fixer. This time we'll use the apostrophe and semicolon hotkeys where apostrophe takes you to the next residual. And the semicolon will move the bead by the residual. So in this case you see here that the residual does point to the gold bead and that's something we like. I'm going to select the plus key a number of times to zoom in. So we see again with the next residual that's a pretty good match. It's not quite right in the center and you could manually fix it if you want. But at this stage in the game, it makes more sense just to proceed, and we'll recompute the alignment in a little bit. Now, these residual vectors don't always point to something useful. Like in this case, there's not actually a gold bead here. So I'm actually going to delete that fiducial marker because there's no marker in sight using the delete key. And then I'll move us on to the next one. So I'm going to go through and make those, and we'll come back in just a second. Okay, now we've gone through and adjusted each of these by their fiducial, some of them producing changes that aren't great, uh, but that's okay because none of them were too far off. In the early cycles in particular, you really want to pay attention to make sure you don't have any really crazy residual vectors, as that could indicate an underlying problem. We're going to close the 3D mod window and again save the model. Now before we compute the alignment, which this is a bit of an iterative process, we're now going to lower the threshold for residual report. So we started at three standard deviations, which is a pretty safe point. Uh, this is pretty well aligned data, so I'm going to go the whole way down to 1 without risking showing too many fine details that aren't worthwhile. Now that we compute again, we're going to view the fiducial model again. I'm going to start out zoomed in because we know there's no large errors and hit apostrophe again. And we're going to go through and just do the same thing. So again, not all of these are perfect. You want to see them finding the beads. Um, one useful thing to do is hover your mouse over the undo move, and that way you can flip through them quickly without really thinking. If you see one that you've moved by residual, then you can just undo it if it is a poor decision. Like that last one, we're going to back up to the last point, and we'd like to undo that move or select the middle mouse button to move it manually. All right, now that we've gone through our last cycle and selected compute alignment after the final adjustment, we'll say that we're done. And this is where we're going to skip a couple steps. We don't need to worry about tomogram positioning because we actually handle that in a different step. And we'll go to final alignment and we'll create the full align stack. And while that's running, that might take just a second depending on how fast your disk drive is. And we'll go to erase gold. Under the Erase Gold tab, we're going to use Find Beads 3D, and typically you do need to adjust this thickness. Uh, typically more is better. I often go for around 3,000 pixels, 
and it's going to do a pretty significant binning, um, which it doesn't let you change for some reason. I'm not sure what the deal is with that. We'll go to a line and build tomogram, and what it's going to do is create a bin stack at a binning of nine, and then create this really thick tomogram. And once it's done, we are going to run find beads 3D. And then this is a good point to actually look at what your reconstruction looks like. So you want to make sure that there's no crazy things going on, uh, no weird distortions, and it also gives you a sense of the data. So I'm going to scroll down and back up. You see it's picking up the gold beads with those blue circles. And you can see the ribosomes nice and clear. You do see that they're on two different planes. There's ribosomes up near the top, and there's a second layer down below. And that's something we'll deal with in the template matching stage. So everything looks okay here. Now what we want to do is just confirm that we did in fact get all of our beads. So we project the model and we'll look at that model in 2D. Now again, just like when you looked at the pre-aligned stack, you just can play it by selecting left or right click. And we see that there's actually a couple beads that show up in the very highest tilt angles. I'll stop it next time it gets there. That don't get picked up, but, but these aren't actually going to be in the reconstruction anyhow. Um, so it's okay if you miss a few. If there's a bunch near the edges, you do want to try and get them because even though they're not going to be in the reconstruction, the projections are normalized prior to CTF correction. And these high intensity outliers are going to throw off the distribution of intensities such that they should be removed in principle by the algorithm in EM Clarity, but it's better to try and remove them manually ahead of time. So the way that you can pick up these outlying edge pixels is to either or both increase the thickness or you can additionally decrease the threshold from 0.05 to maybe 0.025. Uh, if that doesn't work, don't sweat it. It's not the end of the world. You definitely want to get the ones in the center of the tomogram though. You don't actually need to select erase beads. At this point, we're done. So we've created, by reprojecting this model, our alignment model, and now we're ready to gather our results. So I'm going to exit to eTomo, and we're going to go to our working directory, which if we do ls, we see there's a bunch of files here that we don't really need. So what we're going to do is, I have an alias called LT, but it just lists things in reverse order, which you can also get by typing ls lrth. And we want everything that is this. So star FID star. So there is a script available that will do this for you automatically. All you have to give it is this tilt one, the base name that you've chosen. And it will go through and move these things for you. Um, assuming that, of course, you've used the recommended version of iMods that these names are all consistent. And they should be. Um, but I wanted to go through it manually once just to show you what is required and why it is. So there's three files if we did this ls minus lrth star fid star that come up. So this tilt one fid.xf, we'll open that up real quick, is a file that contains the alignment that we fit to go from the full raw data to the uh, full aligned data. So this is just a four element matrix that it describes both an in-plane rotation, any of the magnification or skew changes that we've included, and then a translation that's applied after that rotation to the raw image in X and Y. If you have numbers in this column that are you know, less than 10, what that indicates is you've actually selected a file that is a relative change, not the global change, and you'll have to go through and figure out why that is. So in our case, we've got the right file, so we're going to want to now, we haven't already created the file called fixstacks for the directory, which we'll do back one above raw data. And we're going to move this file to fixstacks, but we're going to call it just tilt1.xf. Now, this is important because EM Clarity is going to look for this, and it's only going to look for it in this sort of naming convention. So you're basically getting rid of the fit. Uh, the tilt contains the tilt angles that we fit during the alignment process. We're going to move that back. And the extension we're going to keep is just .tlt. 
And this erase, this is a binary file, this fiducia model, that describes where those gold beads are. So we're going to move that. And we're going to rename it again, in this case, just to tilt1.erase. Now, if you didn't do any local alignments, those are the only three files you'll copy, and EM Clarity will just ignore it. Minimally, you do need those. If the erase file isn't there, it'll also ignore it, and it just won't erase the beads, which is not ideal if you do have gold beads. Uh, we do also have a local alignment here. So that's called tilt1local.xf. We're going to copy that. as just tilt1.local. So those names again, we renamed the xf file to tilt1xf, the tilt file to tilt1tilt, tilt, the erase file to tilt1erase, and the local to tilt, oops, let's read the one, local. Okay. Now, the only other thing we need to collect here is if we had done an erasing of the gold, or not of the gold bead, but if we had any x-rays, we want to take what we would call the fixed stack which is the raw data. Uh, so this align stack is the final align stack that we created that is not what we want to keep. So this iMod has already applied those transformations that we found in the XF file and created an align stack. Since we're going to later go on and modify those transformations and refine them in EM Clarity, we want to keep the raw data so that way we can proceed with minimal interpolation. Okay, so what I just did was to reopen eTomo and run the CCD x-ray removal just to show you what would happen if you had done that. So when I list the contents using ls minus um, l capital S, oh, there we go, uh, ls with a capital S and an h and an r, it'll list the largest contents last. So it'll show you your stack. So again, we still have our aligned tilt series, but we also have this new one called tilt1fixed.stack. What this is, is the CCD erased, but non-rotated or interpolated version of the raw data. So if we did go through and erase any x-rays or any CCDs, this is something that we would then want to move back to fixed stacks and we would move it and rename it just tilt1.fixed. Since this is kind of artificial, we didn't actually need to do that. I'll show you something different we'll use for this data set. But if in your data, again, you want to keep, this is the same version as the original stack with x-rays removed. All right, so now that we've moved everything back to our fixed stacks, we're just gonna remove everything in this directory, which you wanna be really careful using this wildcard because you can delete everything in every directory. So that's uh, what I'm actually going to do is go back up one, and I'm going to go remove imod align all. And once I'm sure I didn't accidentally leave a space there, which could really ruin your day, I'm going to go ahead and hit this. So it's not going to delete these two directories, but there's only a couple text files in there, so there's no big deal. You're not wasting space. And we're going to go back up out of our raw data directory, and we're going to go into the fixed stacks. Now, fixed stacks is something you're going to keep the whole way through the EM Clarity pipeline, and it's where the quote raw data with this pre processing goes. So, since we didn't actually remove any of your x rays, I'm going to put a symbolic link here again, ln minus s, and we're going to go back to the raw data, and we're just going to link this to the appropriate stack and call it tilt1.fixed. Now I've tried to avoid any real specific naming conventions that you have to stick with, and these five are it. So the input into EM Clarity needs to optionally have this file with local alignments, which if it does, it should be tilt1.local. If you have, then you must have these next two, tilt1.xf and tilt1.tilt. This is the tilt angles and the tilt series alignment, the model for where the gold beads are, and a renamed version of your optionally fixed stack called tilt1.fixed. Uh, there is one thing that I'm just remembering now that we should have addressed from the beginning. You'll remember I pointed out when we opened up eTomo that some information in the header for this stack was incorrect. So if we use the command header, which is an imod command, and select our stack, it's going to print out the information that was there. 
And remember, this pixel size is incorrect, and that's important because e mClarity will read that pixel size and it will relate it back to the local alignments. So if you were to print out the top few lines of the local alignment, you see this line here indicates what binning these alignments relate to in an absolute angstrom size. So this would take this 2.276 and multiply it by 4. So since we did adjust it and we told Etomo that it was 2.17, you might think that it then actually corrected it, but it went back to the header, it ignored what we told it the pixel size was, and it put in this number. So what we want to do is we need to fix two things. We're going to, in a text editor, I'm just using gedit, you could use bi, you could use whatever you want. We're going to open up that local to alignment file, and we're going to change this number to what it should be. So we, remember we worked at a binning of 4, times our 2.17, which should give us a value of 8.68 angstroms per pixel. You only have to change it on this one line. Now, optimally what you would have done is just change the header from the beginning of the raw data so it's correct and then you would never have to go in and alter anything. So it is important if you can, particularly at this stage, to catch it and fix the header. So what we're going to do now is show you how to fix the header. So we're going to use a command called alter header and our tilt series tilt1.fixed. Now it doesn't matter that this isn't the real tilt series, it's going to point it to the right file. Alright, so what it does is it first prints out the header for us. So this is kind of a goofy thing, but in order to change the pixel size, we need to change something called the cell size. So we, under our option, type in CEL for cell. And that gives us the current cell angles and the current cell size. Now what the cell size is, is the pixel size times the actual image dimension. So in our case, we don't want this number, which is 2.27 times 3838. What we actually want, and I'm just going to use Python to calculate, you can just use a calculator, is that guy, M3710, which if you're using a K2, these are almost always going to be the values that you have. And then our number of Z slices is 41. So 2.17 times 41. And then what we do is just come in and enter those three values. So 832846. 80507, and then you also have to enter the cell angles, so just keep those the same as 90. We'll hit enter and type done to indicate we're done. And you always want to confirm when it prints out the new header that the pixel size has been correctly changed. Okay, so just to review real briefly, we've got these files all with the name and convention of a simple name that you've chosen, and this should be consistent then among all your data. Uh, it doesn't absolutely have to be, but it's good to keep things consistent. It helps prevent errors on your end. So I've just chosen tilt to refer to it as a tilt series, and one because it's the first one that I processed. And then I went through and fixed the header to reflect the appropriate pixel size. And, oh, I just noticed something else irritating. So the origin was shifted whenever this alignment was taking place. So. Hmm. Does that make a difference? Let me think for just a second. Okay, and this is why these documentations are so important. <laughs> this is one thing I had entirely forgotten about because it's kind of a quirk that doesn't come up often. And it's not a quirk, it's a quirk. This origin on the pixel should be zero, zero, zero. If it's not, it will goof up the erasing of the beads. Now, it's something I think I could probably go in and fix in the code, but for now it's better when you adjust the header originally to just include this number. So what you should do is at the beginning make sure that you have this set correctly and that you also change the origin to be 0, 0, 0. You would want to do that before the tilt series alignment. I will either post an update to this tutorial video that moves that to the beginning, or I will correct the code and make a note of that appropriately. So thank you for paying attention to what was quite a long tutorial on doing this raw tilt series alignment and getting set up. 
The next video will be based on how to select regions of the tilt series to reconstruct and then move on to template matching.